Today's the day, we're doing the Q&A. Uh, I asked you guys to send us some questions and I got a whole bunch to go through today. So I'm gonna kind of run through some of the questions and answer them as best I can. Started shooting weddings when I was 13, which is obviously super young, right? Kind of fell into it. I was shooting non-league football for a team and one of the players was getting married and he just asked me if I'd go along. <laughs> I went along, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I think I got paid 50 quid at the end of it. I think I did a 15 hour day. And I remember my dad having to pick me up because obviously I wasn't driving, uh, just telling him how buzzing I was about it all. Yeah, it kind of all happened by accident really. And then, I mean, that was 14 years ago. So it's, it's been a, it was a good accident in the end, I suppose. I get asked this question a lot. I'm, uh, I'm Canon, I've always been Canon. The first camera I got, when I was a little kid, when, when I started shooting, was, was a Canon. Uh, my dad, my parents bought me one. And yeah, so I've just always stuck with Canon. There's so many good brands out there. Nikon are great. Sony are doing really great stuff at the moment. I've seen some insane work, like ridiculous work shot on iPhone. There's a, a film that just came out that was shot solely on an iPhone. Uh, it's called Unsane. So really, the, the equipment is, is irrelevant. <laughs> My setup is a 35mm 1.2 and a 50mm 1.2. That's my setup, I've always shot that way. Occasionally I'll shoot with an 85 if I do some portraits. 50 and 35 is, is my go-to lenses really. I don't select the images for people's weddings, so I upload all my stuff to Pixie Set. It's a great online tool for photographers to manage all their images. So there's loads out there like Shootproof, Pixie Set, Zenfolio, they, they all do the same similar kind of thing. What's really cool about Pixie Set, uh, and I can only speak for the ones I've worked with, so you, you can upload the entire gallery and then your clients can go on there and actually select their favorites just by hitting a little heart button. And then that builds a list, which then you can work from when you do the album. So it saves me so much time. The other really cool thing about um, Pixie Set is clients can go on there and purchase prints. So I get a lot of print orders. It's super easy for them to use, which again is great because it just means that it's gonna encourage them to perhaps purchase more. Um, you should go check it out. It's a really, really good good bit of, bit of kit. And it's a really, really cool uh, app for your iPhone or Android or whatever. It's called Unfold. It's just a really cool template building kind of story thing. It takes no time at all to build a story and the layouts are great and it's just super, super simple to use. Super important for when you've like got a lot to do and you're trying to just get content out there. It's free as well, Super, it's a free app. So Unfold, check them out. If I was starting out now, I would definitely say contact as many photographers that you know locally or that you're willing to travel to and just get lots of information from them really. And if they're willing to have you second shoot, then definitely take that opportunity because that is the best way to to learn really, in my opinion. I did a degree in photography and the experience and the kind of knowledge that I gained in three years was surpassed by like doing a handful of weddings with a, with a local photographer. Just because it's, it's real life training, it's kind of like you're, you're actually out there doing it. I think it's a great, great industry to work in. I think that you can be super creative. There's loads of different avenues you can go down. If you've just come out of uni you know, today, I would say just keep building up your portfolio. Shoot as many different things as you can. Gain as much kind of first-hand experience of different situations, play around with lighting, get your head around different ways of shooting, different lenses, different focal lengths. A big thing for me when I was first starting out and straight after university, was definitely just say, never saying no. So if there's an opportunity to shoot something, go and do it because it's just practice. The biggest single tip I can give, and it's everyone will say the same thing, is just practice. Practice, practice, practice. Get really good with your camera, really understand how it works. Learn your camera. Like, So for me, when I'm shooting something, I can pretty much not take my face away from the camera and I can change the settings and I know exactly what I'm doing in, in a split second, which is another reason why I'm, I'm uh, avoiding changing over to um, Sony or another brand because I know Canon and I've, that's all I've shot for 14 years. So it's kind of like, if I were to change systems now, it would be a complete nightmare. There's, there's kind of two, it's the between the 50 mil or the 85, but I would tend to lean towards the 50 just because I use it constantly. It's kind of like my, my baby, I use it for everything. The photography world has got the name of the Nifty 50 because you can pretty much shoot most things with it. Canon do a really, really good and a very, very cheap 1.8 50mm. I think it's about £100. 
I would say that I kind of, I just go in and try and just capture the day as it happens, capture the essence of the day, rather than trying to control stuff, I just want to kind of be there. And I think getting to know your subject, whatever, whoever you're shooting, whatever it is, is quite important because then that, that loosens them up and then you can kind of hopefully get those natural moments throughout the day. And Okay, so currently I am editing about 90% of my work. When it gets really, really busy, I've got, I actually pull in my sister, who's, who's a great editor, and she helps me out. But we've got some really, really exciting news, which um, we'll be sharing very soon about something in the pipeline, which is really cool. Watch this space. Again, talking about efficiency, for me, it's, it's finding software that speeds up processes and makes things easier and simpler and more fun. For the albums, I use Smart Albums. I have done for a couple of years now. My favorite thing about Smart Albums is the comment section that the couples can leave you. Once you've sent the album over to the couple as a kind of like on their proofing website, they can leave feedback under each page and then that feedback comes up as an email and then you can kind of make the changes and resubmit it to the couple. So it just, it just streamlines everything. And I think that's super important these days when you know, time is kind of your most valuable thing. So I work with a company called Folio. I have done for the past six years. And I remember getting my first album through the door and literally being blown away. It was such a beautiful product. These are Folio and they are just amazing. I'll link the video I did for this album here um, in the description. But aside from how good the quality is, the, the people that you work with at Folio are so, so, so helpful and they're just a really, really good bunch. And it feels like a really, really nice team that you work with. I've been asked to go to different album companies by you know a few different brands. and they've sent me samples and there's just no comparison. So if you are looking for the best album manufacturer that there is, speak to Folio. So I use Lightroom, like most people, and occasionally I'll, I'll dip into Photoshop if I need to. But aside from that, it's mainly Lightroom and I also use JPEG Mini when I export images to save a bit of space. So, and again, JPEG Mini is great, is a great product. So I've mentioned a few. I use Pixie Set for my image uploading for my kind of gallery gallery space. I use Lightroom to do my editing. I use JPEG Mini for shrinking the size of the images without losing any quality. And I also use Smart Albums, which I which I mentioned about. So I I studied photography at college. I kind of learned basics there and. And then I went to university and again, it was, it was fairly basic stuff that they taught you. If I'm honest, the, the most I learned from was probably watching like YouTube videos and, or tutorials online just to see how people set up their lighting. If you have an idea for a shoot that you wanna do or a certain, you've seen some cool lighting in, it, in something, if you Google that, I'm sure there'll be a video online for it. Yes, I mean, I, I photograph absolutely anyone, anywhere, anytime. I, I've got no qualms with shooting same-sex weddings. I did a few last year, and one of my favorite ever shoots I did actually was in uh, Mykonos with a same-sex couple, Chandra and Jason, and um, we flew out there and did some photos in Mykonos, and it was, it was brilliant. They're just a lovely couple. And... This is a great question. So for me, the variety is great. There's, you know, I remember there have been times where I've, I've shot football and then the next day I've gone to shoot at a dentist and then the next day I've shot a wedding and then the next day I've shot somebody swimming. So what's really cool is it's, it's so varied. I, I love that aspect of it that it's never it's never dull. There's always different things happening and different shoots in the pipeline and that kind of stuff. So that's really cool. And I love the traveling aspect of it. I get to travel lots and visit lots of cool places and meet lots of cool people and shoot lots of really interesting stuff. So I love tying in weddings when I get to travel. So lots of destination weddings. This year I've got seven weddings abroad, so which will be super fun all over Europe and, and stuff like that. So, which is great. Just It just means that I can tie in my two loves. I get to travel lots and I get to take photos of people, which is what I love doing. You know, if I'm shooting a wedding, I, I love the social aspect of that. It just means that you get to really get involved in, in such a lovely day. And you know, when everything falls together beautifully, it's there's no, for me, there's no better feeling. I, I absolutely love it. I come away from a wedding just buzzing. As long as I have that feeling, I'm gonna keep doing it. The, the other thing that's really great about being a wedding photographer is that you get such fulfillment. And I, I don't know many other industries of work that you get that instant fulfillment that you've, you've delivered something that is gonna be really important to a, to a couple or to a family. You know, it's, it's sometimes, you can forget that and you've got to kind of remind yourself what, what you're being a part of and, and it is it is much greater than just just a day it's this kind of like family 
historical event that you'll be that you're kind of documenting. The other really cool thing about my job is the kind of camaraderie and the the kind of the industry as a whole is really really friendly and that's something I love about it now is it's very very open so it's a super friendly environment for photographers to kind of integrate with each other and you know there's there's a million workshops you can go on these days which is great because you can learn so much in those kind of spaces so for me that one of the biggest things is is what a friendly industry that it is I'm gonna be doing a video on all the kit that I use in detail so that will be coming up next so thanks so much for watching guys